I'm going to talk now this morning with Captain Al Young. He is the commander of the U.S. Coast Guard Sector Key West. Before coming here to the Keys, he was the deputy commander of the St. Petersburg Sector. But about a year ago, we became fortunate enough to have him right here in the Keys, and I know he is happy to be serving us down here. Captain Al, thank you for being on the show with Thank me. you for having me. All right. First, I want to talk with you about your background a little bit. As I mentioned before this, you were the deputy commander Correct. of the St. Petersburg sector. But Captain Now, you go all the way back to the Midwest, don't you? Don't make me sound very old here. But <laughs> You're very young. You're very young, okay? <laughs> I joined the Coast Guard in 1978. So mm -hmm. from there, uh, in Chicago, rose to the uh, rank of chief petty officer and decided that I'd make a go of officer candidate school. I've had some very interesting assignments from the jungles of South America to the North Atlantic through the Caribbean and points in between. So it's been quite quite a great career for me. It sounds like it's been a very interesting mm -hmm. career. Do you have a favorite job? favorite sector that you've been in command of? You know, the I've had four commands. If you ask me command, I would say that Key West, this has been my largest. This is where I can make the biggest impact. But if you ask me for my favorite unit, I would have to say it was in Kentucky of all places. And you'd say, well, what's the Coast Guard doing there? Well, the inland waterways and the community just absolutely was embracing and engaging. And I learned so much there. When you were a young kid growing up, did you ever imagine that this is what you would be doing one day? No, as a matter of fact, uh, even when I joined the Coast Guard, I didn't have a full appreciation for its missions. I knew that I wanted to do something that would make an impact. Uh, one particular week, I picked up the newspaper, and every day the Coast Guard was featured, either page one to page four. Mm -hmm. and they told me that probably make them pretty important contributions and I did a little homework and here I am today. Wow. And how old were you at the time when you saw that? In oh, I was uh, <laughs> 17 when I saw the articles and, and 18 when I joined. Wow, wow. But you're happy with the decisions that you've made. Oh, absolutely. You, I don't think you spend 35 years doing something that you aren't passionate about and if you do spend that amount of time and not be passionate about it, then you're absolutely miserable. I hope I don't appear to be miserable. No, <laughs> you don't appear to be miserable at all. So you, you must be in the right field. Then. I am in the right place. Let's talk about your time here in the Keys. You just came down here about a year ago. How is it so far? The Keys is unlike any other unit where I've been stationed. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of places where you go, they talk about diversity within the community. Key West lives it. Uh, the community here is just absolutely great and of course being on an island being in the Keys uh, that makes my job quite secure because the majority of what folks will involve themselves with here is either related to or on the water mm -hmm. so the Coast Guard has a tremendous role to play here in the Florida Keys. You absolutely do have a big role down here in the Keys and let's talk for a minute about people who are out in the water right now Pe more people are definitely getting out on their boats. It's March, spring breakers, especially in town. Do you have some tips for them getting on the water? Well, first and foremost, understand that here in the Keys, it's a 24-7, 365 day adventure. Mm -hmm. It's rarely where the weather is so adverse that folks will not go out on their boats. So I do have a few tips. I would say that if you're going to be out on the water, know about boating, so take a course. About three-fourths three of the people who get themselves into trouble on the water have never had any formal education about boating whatsoever. Mm -hmm. In boating, understand what's happening, the elements, alcohol. Nearly one-third of all accidents that are attributable to boating have some alcohol involvement that's involved. I would urge individuals to wear a life preserver. They work. Uh, there are many different styles, so there's no excuse about them being too bulky. Buy one that's going to fit you and fit you well. We do know that of those individuals who are involved in boating accidents, 
about 75% result in drowning. And of the 75% that result in drowning, about 84% of those boaters were not wearing a life jacket. I would say invest in a radio. Folks get underway with cellular phones. Cellular phone towers don't work out to the same distances as the towers that feed your VHF radios. So invest in that. And as you put out a call for help, more than one person is hearing you. It's not point to point, but it's a broadcast. Mm -hmm. So that's in your favor. And then I'd say if you're going to be out on the water, let folks know what you're going to do. So put in a flow plan. Let people know exactly what your intentions are and when you plan on being back. And be a creature of habit. Okay. So if people can just follow these tips, we could avoid a lot of boating ac accidents and have a much, much safer season. We won't avoid them all together, but we can at least know that individuals are able to help themselves. Mm -hmm. And when we put resources out there, we know that we're dispatching them to the right place. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on this morning. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for you. having me. You're going to have to come back on much more in the future, okay? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I know there's always something that we can be talking about on the water. Thanks. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages.